As we know, the primary purpose of assessment and evaluation is to improve student learning. Evaluation refers to the process of judging the quality of student learning on the basis of established performance standards and assigning a value to represent that quality. Evaluation accurately summarizes what students know and can do with respect to the overall curriculum expectations. Evaluation is based on assessment of learning that provides evidence of student achievement at strategic times throughout the greater course, often at the end of a period of learning. Teachers must have sufficient proof of a student's learning. By using a process known as triangulation, teachers can obtain data of student learning from three different sources, which are conversations, observations, and products. In planning for conversations to evaluate student learning, teachers can create a list of intentional questions to ask students to ensure that they're getting evidence of their learning. General questions and prompts such as what are you learning about and tell me more about that are useful for getting the student talking, but you'll also need some more specific questions and prompts. Start by reviewing the curriculum expectations and crafting questions that connect to these as well as other explicit goals you have set out for your students. Teachers can also sequence the questions to bring out deeper learning and evidence starting with questions on simpler goals and thinking skills, and then moving progressively to higher order thinking questions. This allows students to share different levels of learning that you can evaluate clearly. It's important to know what you want to evaluate and to have the goals in mind as you ask questions and probe for student thinking. It's important to paraphrase to the student what they're sharing as a way to show you're listening and to allow them to clarify if you didn't quite understand what they were saying or if they made an oversimplification or error. Some other examples of conversations can be conferencing, journals, and blogs. Now, observations can take place during class time while students are involved in individual, pair, or group work. The teacher will circulate around the room and observe student learning. Observations can be documented using a checklist or anecdotal notes. The observation process is completed after the class has ended, with the teacher taking the checklist results or anecdotal notes and putting them into a file for each student. This process allows the teacher to track each student's progress over time in a much effective and accurate manner. Student products may be in the form of tests or exams and or assignments for evaluation. Assignments for evaluation may include rich performance tasks, demonstrations, projects, and or essays. To ensure equity for all students, assignments for evaluation and tests or exams are to be completed whenever possible under the supervision of the teacher. Assignments for evaluation must not include ongoing homework that students do in order to consolidate their knowledge and skills or to prepare for the next class. Assignments for evaluation may involve group projects as long as each student's work within the group project is evaluated independently and assigned an individual mark as opposed to a common group mark. Using multiple sources of evidence, such as conversations, observations, and products, increases the reliability and validity of the evaluation of student learning.